This is Radio Health Journal. I'm Nancy Benson. This week, why aren't cardiologists learning about nutrition? 90% of the practicing cardiologists said that they received either no or minimal nutrition education during their cardiology training. Why nutrition isn't taught to doctors when Radio Health Journal continues. 70% of medical decisions are based on the findings of pathologists, who also diagnose virtually all cancers. Given the importance of these decisions, the nation's largest and most complex laboratories ensure they're operating at the highest standards through inspection and accreditation by the College of American Pathologists. CAP inspects and accredits laboratories in 19 of the 20 top hospitals in the recent U.S. News and World Report rankings. Dr. Richard Friedberg is the CAP president. The CAP's laboratory accreditation program is internationally recognized as the most rigorous set of standards in laboratory science. Forty percent of the nearly 3,000 items on our inspection checklist exceed regulatory compliance because a patient's health is on the line. Every CAP inspection team includes one pathologist and a team of laboratory professionals. The CAP's exhaustive inspection checklists are updated annually to help laboratories stay on the cutting edge of medicine. Find out more at cap.org news. Most of us can agree that we want to eat healthy, but what does that translate to? Nowadays, there's so much information out there about what's healthy and what's not that it can be hard to know what to eat. One day, experts are touting the health benefits of a food. The next day, a study suggests it gives you cancer. For cardiologist Charles Katzenberg, nutrition is a topic that comes up every day in conversations with his patients. Katzenberg works at the University of Arizona Sarver Heart Center and says that a lack of agreement when it comes to defining heart-healthy diet can make it difficult to give advice. There's a lot of different beliefs in terms of what works and what doesn't work. We clearly don't have a national consensus in terms of what would one call, you know, a heart-healthy diet or a cancer-preventing diet. That part makes it difficult because people will get different information in different places. It can be difficult to determine what foods will keep you most healthy, but Katzenberg believes the importance of nutrition in general can't be understated. Nutrition, just in general, in terms of prevention of multiple diseases, is the foundation. And even in the American College of Cardiology, American Heart Association guidelines for prevention, Nutrition is outlined as a critically important feature. A new study in the American Journal of Medicine investigates the role nutrition plays in cardiology and the bigger role it probably should play. The study finds nearly 90% of cardiologists believe dietary interventions are likely to help patients, but the vast majority of cardiologists are getting little or no nutrition training in med school or their fellowships. 90% of the practicing cardiologists said that they received either no or minimal nutrition education during their cardiology training. And before that, it wasn't very much at all, either in medical school, very little, in residency, also very little. That's Dr. Stephen DeVries, lead author of the study and executive director of the Gaples Institute for Integrative Cardiology. So the bottom line is that we've got practicing cardiologists who have received very little, if any, nutrition education during the course of their training. So it's a sad fact, and I think the most unfortunate part is that it leaves these professionals who are on the forefront of working to really reduce the burden of cardiovascular disease without knowledge of one of its most powerful interventions. Because cardiologists are left to their own devices, just like the rest of us, they can be influenced by what they hear and see in the media. They use common sense, but DeVries thinks many cardiologists are still missing key training, which could help when counseling patients. Although many aspects of nutrition are very intuitive and you'd think, you know, they're just kind of common sense recommendations, there's a great deal related to nutrition that is not only a matter of common sense, but requires some real training and knowledge, let alone The other part that's really imperative for physicians to learn the counseling skills to effectively work with patients so that knowledge actually makes an impact. So back to our basic question, why isn't nutrition being taught to cardiologists? What it comes down to is there's just a huge amount of material that we are expecting fellows to learn. And nutrition, unfortunately, is not 
at the upper level of that material. My hope is that going forward in the future, it will become more prevalent because it's clearly an important part of healthcare in the country. Both experts agree that the lack of training also has to do with the way our healthcare system is constructed. I think in a large degree, it's just a reflection of the lack of emphasis on prevention in general. There's much more emphasis in medical care on the treatment and diagnosis of more advanced disease. Medical care is mostly focused on the pharmacologic parts of prevention. Disease intervention is probably, you know, 90 to 95% of where we spend our money. 5 to 10% is spent in prevention. It is easier to write a prescription for a pill than to have a conversation about how to get the same benefit. It takes more time. It's a little more complicated. But both experts agree more nutrition training is needed for cardiologists and for physicians in general. But doctors can't do it alone. Katzenberg and DeVries say a partnership between nutritionists and physicians is key to providing better treatment. Even if cardiologists and physicians in general were to become more knowledgeable about nutrition, I believe they would be much more empowered and more likely to make effective referrals to other nutrition professionals like dietitians or competent nutritionists so that they can carry the ball from that point forward. Cardiologists and physicians certainly can't do it all and they shouldn't, but they should at least be able to impart with patients, I believe, the most critical message, which is that even if they need to take medications or do procedures, that there are no medications or procedures by themselves that will impart ideal health. It also needs to be a matter of you know, excellent lifestyle recommendations. According to DeVries' study, nearly two-thirds of cardiologists say they spend just three minutes or less per visit discussing nutrition. Katzenberg says the limited time he has with each patient sometimes prevents him from discussing nutrition as much as he would like. That's where nutritionists can help. As a physician doing an interaction with a patient in a more or less time-limited visit in which you have to deal with a lot of stuff, there's just not enough time to deal with all of the other aspects of your patient's illness and health. So having a nutritionist available is always good. And when it looks like it's appropriate, I, I will refer a patient to a nutritionist because they're going to be more focused and be able to spend more productive time. For DeVries, a lack of nutrition training can no longer be ignored. Heart and vascular disease claims more than 600,000 lives in the U.S. each year and costs more than $315 billion. People involved with training say, listen, you know, we don't have that much time for teaching about nutrition because we've got all these new drugs that we need to talk about and new procedures and genetic information, and all of that is true. But this is also true. How can we say that any aspect of health is more important than nutrition when it's been clearly established that poor quality diet is the number one risk factor leading to premature death and disability? It just doesn't make sense. You can find out more about all our guests through links on our website site, RadioHealthJournal.net. Our writer-producer this week is Libby Foster. Our production director is Sean Waldron. I'm Nancy Benson. Medical Notes this week. Experts estimate about 2 million Americans 12 or older have a substance abuse problem related to prescription pain relievers. However, that's a small slice of those who are prescribed opioids. A new study from the journal JAMA Surgery finds as much as 92% of patients never use their entire prescription, yet they don't dispose of the pills either. Researchers say this leads to an increased chance of pills being sold, abused, lost, or taken in error. Researchers say doctors need to take a more personalized approach to how they prescribe opioids instead of a one-size-fits-all approach. Eating more turkey may help your gut. Turkey and other protein-rich foods like dairy, nuts, and beans have high levels of the amino acid tryptophan, which helps activate cells restricting inflammation. A new study in Science finds that a combination of a certain bacteria and tryptophan could help patients with inflammatory bowel disease. And finally, many celebrity moms have been slammed on social media for their parenting choices, but a new survey from C.A. Ma Children's Hospital finds that mommy shaming isn't limited to celebrities. According to the survey, 60% of mothers say they have been criticized for their parenting, most often by their own parents, in-laws, or co-parent. 42% of mothers say the criticism has made them feel unsure about their parenting choices. And that's Medical Notes this week. 
Thank you for listening to Radio Health Journal, a production of MediaTrax Communications. If you enjoyed this week's show, please leave a review on iTunes or share it with a friend. You can find more Radio Health Journal stories about health, science, and technology on iTunes, Stitcher, and at RadioHealthJournal.net.